The factory pattern is a creational pattern, so obviously we use it to create objects. These objects can be different types of objects, but they are usually related in some way. For example, they could share the same parent object or data type, or they could just have the same interface. An example of a factory is the document.createElements method. You simply supply the tag name of the element that you want to create, and it creates an element object for you. But it's not just an element. Like For example, I just created a div element. This created an object of type HTML div element. And if we created an input element, it would create an element of type HTML input element. So this create element factory method hides all of the complexity involved in creating different types of element objects. And this also gives us a unified API for creating an element. If we want to create an element, it doesn't matter what type of element, we come to document.createElement. This is as opposed to newing up constructors for creating element objects. In this lesson, we're going to write our own factory for creating form control elements, you know, input elements that have different type properties. And we're going to define this as an AMD module, and we're going to use the DOM creation module that we wrote in lesson nine. So let's first of all return the object that we want to return. This is going to have a create method and it will accept an options object. This will have all of the information that we need in order to create a form control element. The first thing we need is the type of the element that we want to create, and we want to make sure that we have a type. So we will check to see if we have a type property on our options object. If we don't, then we need to throw an error, and we'll get to that in a moment. Because if we don't have a type, this whole thing is kind of pointless. But if we do have a type, let's go ahead and set it to lowercase. And if we don't have a type, let's set our type variable as undefined. Now I'm setting this to lowercase because this is how I'm going to create these elements. I'm going to have an object called controls. And this object is going to have methods that match the type of the elements that we want to create. But these are all going to be lowercase. So text is all lowercase. We'll also have a checkbox. And that's all that we are going to write for this lesson. If you wanted to add other methods for other types of form controls, feel free to add those in. Going back to our creates method, let's now check to see if we have a value in our type variable. And we should also go ahead and make sure that we have a property in our controls object. Because we could have a value in our type, but it might not be a property on our controls object. And if that's the case, then we don't support whatever was specified as the type. So we will simply throw a new object that has a message property, and we'll just say that type is not supported. And that's really all that we need to do there. So if we make it past this if statement, we want to create our element. So we will return controls, use bracket syntax, pass in type, call that property, and pass in options. And that's really all that we need to do for our factory method. It performs the necessary validation, and if validation passes, then it hands off the creation of the actual elements to the appropriate method on our controls object. The two methods that we are implementing are input elements, so it makes sense to create an input element outside of these methods. So we will have a helper function called create input, all we need is the type of input element that we want to create, and then we will create that element. And we will use our DOM creation module to create that input element. We need to set the type to whatever was specified, and then return the element. Now we don't have to worry about type here, because the only way that we can get to this create input function is through our text and checkbox methods. And the only way that we can get to these methods is if we pass validation in our factory. So these methods are going to be pretty clean. Let's first focus on the text method. We need the options parameter, and let's create our element. So var l equals create input, and this needs to be a text element, but we'll just do options.type. Although since this is the method for creating text input elements, we can just pass text. Then after we create the element, we might have a value for this text box. 
and that is supplied by the value property on our options object. So let's first of all check to see if the value property is not undefined. It's not good enough to just check options.value because we might want to set the value of zero, which is falsy. So type of options.value does not equal undefined, then we will set the value on our input element. So el.value equals options.value. And of course, if there were other properties that we wanted to support, we could add the code for those as well. But we will simply just return the element. We will do kind of the same thing for the checkbox. We need the options parameter. Let's create our element. We will use the create input element, and we want a checkbox. A checkbox has a checked property, which is something that we would probably want to set through our options object. So we want to use the type of operator once again. If options.checked does not equal undefined, then we want to set the checked property on our element. So el.checked equals options.checked. And then we will return the element. So now let's test this in the browser. Let's go to lesson11.js. We want to require the lesson11 underscore module file. And then we want our function. Let's call this parameter controls. And then let's create a text box and a checkbox. We'll start with a text box. Let's just call this text. And we want to call controls.create. The type is going to be text. And let's set a value. Let's just set this to hello factory. Then let's create a checkbox. We'll call the object check. We want controls.create. The type is going to be a checkbox. And let's go ahead and set the checked property to true. And then we need to add these elements to the document. So document.body.appendChild. Let's do text first. And then we will do the checkbox. And then we will run this in the browser. And after I refresh, we should see our text box with Hello Factory and our check box that is checked. Let's briefly look at another example. And this is old code, so please don't judge me by this. I plan on rewriting this, but I just haven't gotten around to it. If you go to github.com slash jwmcpeak slash xparser, this will take you to my xparser repo. xparser is an RSS and Atom feed parser. So it takes that XML and deserializes it into a unified API. We're not going to delve into the details here. But I have several data types. I have a base feed data type. Then I have an RSS feed data type, which of course inherits from base feed. Then I have an atom feed data type, which of course also inherits from base feed. Now, if you want to parse an RSS or atom feed, you don't directly create an object of RSS feed or atom feed. Instead, you use a factory function. I have one called get feed. You supply a URL and there's also the callback function and callback scope. That's all going to change eventually, but you give it a URL and then the factory function determines what type of feed it is. So it will go out, retrieve that feed, determine what it is, and then create the appropriate object. And of course, if it doesn't support it, then it throws an error. So there is some complexity involved as far as this factory is concerned. But that's one of the pluses of the factory. You can put that complexity here in the factory. And then first of all, you don't have to worry about it in your client code that's consuming that factory. And it can also save you some time whenever you are creating the objects, kind of like what we did with our form control factory. We validated the data once, and then we didn't have to worry about that whenever we actually created those elements. So the factory pattern is very helpful in a variety of situations. They're useful when you need to create an object that requires a lot of complexity, and they're also useful when you need to create objects that are very similar to one another or they have the same interface.